Well, hello to you all. I'm Jeff Hopper with Lynx Players President Jeffrey Cranford. And we've come to 5.5. That is 5.5. Spiritual Due Diligence Study 5, Death and Life After Death, and Lesson 5. And Lesson 5 has to do with how resurrection is enabled. Let me ask you this, Jeff. Among the things that Christians believe, how high is resurrection on that scale? It's the, it's the, maybe it's not the ultimate, certainly it would be the penultimate uh, position theologically because without Christ's death and atonement, we're not atoned for, but without his resurrection, there's no hope that he was the Messiah mm -hmm. because there's no continuity. So when you see Daniel, for instance, seeing this one like the Son of Man coming in all dominion and all power, well, that's all, that hasn't happened yet, but that necessitates that the Messiah would be resurrected. And so if he's not resurrected, there's ultimately no hope for us to be resurrected. So our hope all comes with him. And I, I tell guys all the time as we sit around these groups, I say, you can't treat this casually. You can't say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus was raised from the dead, but then it's not that significant. I mean, it's impossible. Mm. It, if he was raised from the dead, it is the seminal moment in all of human history. Yeah. If he wasn't raised from the dead, then he was an interesting guru. I would argue that he was uh, uh, a horrific guy, quite frankly, if he wasn't raised from the dead. Uh, and people say, well, I like his teachings. And you know, you hear Deepak Chopra and some of these guys, mm -hmm. gurus, talking about he's a wonderful teacher and moral teacher and all that. I would argue that millions of people on the mission field have given their lives for the centuries. Wow. And if he wasn't raised from the dead, then he wasn't the Messiah. He wasn't that one of son of man that the prophet saw in Daniel. And that he actually, uh, was, was his life was a catastrophe, only in the sense that so many have given their lives to serve him, and it's all a fraud, a sham, uh, a myth. And so his teaching would not be good and moral. It would be uh, coercive, manipulative, and completely fraudulent. But with his resurrection, it gives credence to everything that he taught because he now breaks the chains of death that bind us all. And um, yeah, so the resurrection is, without the resurrection, we have just an interesting guru teacher 2,000 years ago. With the resurrection, we have the Messiah. We have uh, God's son. We have um, the, our hope, our hope for our own resurrection. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. There are obviously are those who argue against the Christian faith, and one of their arguing points is it's not possible, this whole resurrection thing. Are they, are they attacking you know, the core of what we believe? I find, I find it, I, I don't mean to laugh at the opposition, but I find it an absurd statement that resurrection is not possible. If you were to take us back, 50 years ago, and I, if I grab your cell phone and I pick it up and I, he said, what are you doing with that? And I said, well, I'm calling someone in Japan. <laughs> and he said, well, that's impossible. Well, you, there's no cord on it. Millie's not down there dialing it up and then you couldn't do it anyway. What are you talking about? Well, no, this, this little cell phone goes, sends a signal and goes thousands of miles up, or take a hundred years ago, thousands of miles up to a satellite. What's a satellite? Well, a satellite's something we put in orbit around the Earth that picks up these signals. Well, where are these signals coming from? They're invisible. Invisible signals that are going to a spaceship thousands of miles up in the air and then transferring that over to another person's little silver box that they're holding in their hand in Japan. I mean, it would have seemed the most absurd thing in the world. What we'll imagine is possible. Now, so resurrected, and then in light of creation, I'll say, okay, God can create out of nothing Something. I mean, we're not talking about people taking matter and forming it into something. We're talking about God speaking into existence everything that is, we can see, taste, touch, and feel, mm -hmm. the electrons and protons and quarks and all that, and yet he can't resuscitate, essentially. I mean, it's just a, if you don't posit God at all, then resurrection seems Im improbable, if not impossible. With God posited, Nothing's improbable or impossible. Nothing's impossible. And even in light of science and our understanding, I mean, people are still working for, you know, the, the, the eternal fountain of youth. I mean, we still work towards that. But to imagine that God couldn't resuscitate is just, is in my view, a silly 
notion. Hmm. Interesting. Well, obviously, if we're going to study Scripture, then uh, we want to get to a study of the resurrection because it is so central. And so we're glad that you're getting the opportunity yes. to study the resurrection because it is vital to understanding life after death. And it will change the way that you think about your life now. Once you recognize that resurrection is in the future, uh, for those who trust Jesus for their salvation, I mean, the sky's the limit now. Hmm.